Hi, welcome to this section of my videos. In this section of my video, I'm going to be taking you through on how you're going to use the table of specification for your course writing. Because before you start developing your courses or writing material for online learners or distance learners, the first thing you need to do is to design. And the last stage of the design is to prepare your table of specification, which is given to the content writers to write the content. So how do you use the table of specification? This is what I'm going to take you through shortly. So let's look at it. I am still your very Awajaja Juliet in video. So right here, we're trying to see how you go to walk through the table of specification. First, you need to have the keynotes. And looking at the keynotes, the first thing is the getting to know the house style for your course presentation. What is the house style that you are using in presenting your course? The house style differ from institution to institution. So you need to find out what house style the institution you are working for is using. You study the house style so that you can now integrate the table of specification into the house style. However, sometimes before you start developing the table of specification, those that develop the table of specification who are the designers would have the consider the house tie in developing the table of specification. So that the structuring will be in order with the house tie. But where that has not been considered, when you come in, because you that is the writer, you may not have been the one that developed the table of specification. You need to study a request for the house tie so that you can align both together. Now, in the alignment of the content in the table of specification with the house tie, what do you do? You look at what is specified in the table of specification, then you go through the content and see how it is going to be integrated or aligned with it. Then the next thing is structuring the content using the table of specification. Links to text should not be more than three pages. should be about that because remember, when you are linking uh, activities to test for students to read, is going to add up to their workload. And with the workload, if it is too heavy, they may not be able to grab what they need to do. When we get to the table of specification, you're going to see we have the estimated minimum study hours that is prescribed that's going to be used. So monitor the workload of the learner. Again, where you are making a reference to a research article, you have to uh, provide the learners the areas they need to consider, the area they need to focus on when they are reading that article. Now, the reason is not to overburden the learners with workload. A course is one out of other courses because that course they are working on is one out of many other courses that they're going to take. For example, a student may need to take up to eight courses. And if it is a training program, definitely sometimes maybe that person too is working and is learning. So this add up to the workload that is going to have and the number of courses or other activities is going to do. So if you overburden one course, it will tell on the total workload of the students. So do not overburden a student in a course. Now embedding the links. While you are developing the content, you always have to embed links. Either you are embedding links to videos, embedding links to content, embedding link to illustrations, then you could embed link to videos where interviews are held i attach a link do not just drop the link and tell students to walk through no you must provide a leading statement that is what i refer to a leading write-up a leading statement that will guide the learners on what they need to do with that link or what they need to do with the site you are taking them to so you may call it a step to the link or give guidance to the learners on what to do with the link content then the link can be embedded with the text or at the end of the sentence or paragraph so then here for example i want to write here i say oh look through the subtopics then i can decide to highlight these subtopics and link it and i still uh go on and identify still speak on now when the student see that highlight it clicks on it it goes to where you have linked the students too. But however, it is always better when you are really using it for study to give a guide on what they need to do with that particular link. Now, let's look at sample of content 
that has been developed using the table of specification. 714, Introduction to Online Learning, and it's a two credit unit. Now, if you look through what we have here in this table of specification, you have a space for module and unit, prior knowledge, learning outcome, learning activities, key content, pedagogical approach, learning resources, assessment type. Then you have minimal estimated time of uh, self study, then person responsible. I'm going to explain this shortly. Right here, we have module sign unit. This module sign unit is, is not generic. It depends on whom you are developing for and what you want to use. That is where the house style starts from. Like here, we'll try to break into chunk the content. And where you are chunking the content, you have a major heading that form a big theme. And under that, you have a song. So in this case, I am using modules to be the major heading. And under the headings of the we we'll have under modules, we we'll now have the sub headings that will be the units. And we're going to still have sub sub. So in this case, Maybe you can decide to use section and you use subsections. You can use chapter and units. You can use chapter. You can use block. So depending on what you want to use to help demarcate the major heading from the other subheadings. Then you have the prior knowledge. The prior knowledge is the knowledge that is required that will help the student achieve the current knowledge that is going to be transferred. So in this regard, it is not all the time prior knowledge is required. For example, looking at this introduction to online learning, you don't really need a prior knowledge for you to be able to get this because it's an introduction. It means you are starting there. So in the course wise, we may not need, need prior knowledge. Now, when it comes to the uh, topic and the unit wise, you might have a need to have a prior knowledge. But if there is no prior knowledge, no prerequisites that is required for the student to work on that content, leave it free. For example, maybe, if, let me cite an example. Maybe you want to do a quadratic equation and you're feeling that, oh, for the student to be able to understand quadratic equation, you need to know factorization. So factorization would be the prior knowledge that will be required to ensure that the student can factorize before he can go into solving a bigger one quadratic equation. Now we have the learning outcome. The learning outcome is what the student will be able to do by the end of this particular knowledge that have been transferred. So in this case, here the, the learning outcome has been stated for you. All you need to do when you get to the writing is just to copy and paste. But this learning outcome is very important because it directs every other activities in this case. Now we have the learning activities. These are the activities that will help to achieve the learning outcome. This is what the students are going to do within this particular unit, because we have a unit, this is what they will do. Then we have the key content. The key content, the focus that will be on the unit in this particular area. This is the unit, and these are the key content that we come up. Then we have the pedagogical approach, the methods you are going to use to translate, to ensure that the students are able to get through what they need to learn. And here we are saying individualistic. Individualistic means at a point the student is going to study by itself or by herself, by what you're going to provide. Now, here we have transmissive. Transmissive, you're going to send textual content, video content, illustration to the student. You're going to send it, and the student is going to walk through that, and that is transmissive. Collaborative, in the sense that are points that the students need to work together as pairs. And in this case, it can come in different ways. It could be through discussion forum. It could be working as a group and making presentation. It could be maybe you want them to have a discussion together and the rest of them. So depending on what you want them to do, in that way, they are collaborating. And they could even do peer review. They are collaborating and they come to discuss it. Then you have learning resources. These are resources that are required in this particular topic. For this topic, now the unit one, the concept, and we are looking at the key content, which will a breakdown of the topic, what will be required, the resources that will help the learners achieve this learning outcome. Remember, that is a focus. So here, we'll send a link to a test on pedagogical approach. Now, if you look through, we have uh, the our learning outcome. First, we have Differentiate online learning from the face-to-face -face and apply basic online learning techniques, which we are pedagogy comes in. And if you go through the key content, you see that it has been broken down into different between online learning and face-to-face -face and pedagogical 
pedagogy and learning techniques. So right here, this will fit. And here again, a link to a test on different learning techniques. So it means you are the one to look for this test. And the test must be very relevant. And the test must be such that it's of high quality. And it's always really recommended if you can use an OER test that have been verified good. You look for good OER tests that have been verified. Then sometimes it could be a test to a research work that has been conducted. Sometimes it could be a test, it could be a link to uh, a video. And this video, it could be maybe you have to develop the video or a video that is already in existence, but you link to it. Then there are times you want to link to a video that it has to do with interview. So all these are resources that are required. Then there are times if it is in the sciences that you need to have a particular tools that will be required for them to carry out what they need to do. And sometimes a particular platform that is required all these are resources that will be required. Then we're talking about assessment type. We have here, I stated, four MCQ, multiple choice questions. You have to just mention the type of assessment you are looking onto. to. It means when I finish this unit, I'm going to develop four multiple choice questions. Remember, I have mentioned that I'm going to do self-assessment exercises. So I can use this, my four multiple choice questions to form my self-assessment exercises. Then here I have a portfolio because here too, if you look at the learning activities, I say portfolio, and I'm going to let them record into their portfolio. Their discussion forum is part of the uh, activities here that is being uh, mentioned, discussion. So here I'm going to come up with a discussion forum question that we enable them discuss. It's part of the assessment. Then here I talk about case studies. And here too, we're going to have a presentation. We're going to have a case study where they will make their presentation and so on. So these are activities they are going to work through. And here we have the synchronous in whereby they will have group work and presentation. If you go through the content, you see where we actually use case studies. We didn't use our form of assessment here that will be graded but within the content case studies concept. Now, let me quickly talk about the asynchronous and synchronous. For the asynchronous, we are saying that for these activities, the student or the learner is going to do it at his own, our own timing within a structured period. And here is not going to collaborate and it's, going to be, it's not going to be a real time or feast time. But here for the synchronous, we're telling that it's real time. There will be a feast time that the group is going to talk the presentation at a feast time. That is why it's separated. You have asynchronous and synchronous. Now, let us see this. Now, we have this big, we have here, we do one, application of course design for online learners. Now, under that, we have the first unit concept of online learning and pedagogy. Right here, this unit one is not the only unit. I just brought out this as a sample. I have four units in this module. So now, how are we going to translate it? using this one now to come up with the content that will be given to the students or the learners because this is for the writers this has been prepared and is given to you the writer so when you walk through this you read through it the way i have gone through it now so the next stage is how are we going to deploy this now for writing so let's look at that so first thing you need to do when you're writing is to have the course information and that course information would have been given to you, not reflected, would have been written above the table of specification. If it's not there, you just pick it and you put it. What is it? Course code, course title, the credit unit, the course status. Is it core elective required? We'll put it there. Then the course blob. The course blob is always very important because it gives you uh, a, a, a brief of what the course is all about. Then you have the semester, the first semester, course duration is 13 weeks and require hours of study is stated there. Now we go on, you have the course team. All these ones has to do with the format. Depends on the format that the institution that you are working for has. Now the first thing that we need to come up is the course guide. The course guide is very important because it guides the students through what it needs to do and how it needs to work through that course to be successful. So again, the course guide Right, developing the course guide that is a house format that goes with it. That is why often we don't include it where you're developing the table of specification because it's a structure that you will work with. So, for example, here we have introduction, 
you are introducing the course then you walk through there you go to the competencies course competencies the course objective it depends again that's why i mentioned the course uh the house style in some institution they don't need to get both once they have the course objective it is okay they are good to go because from the course objective that is where the modules are derived then you have walking through this course in this place and right here again you have the uh, specification that has been marked in this particular place and right here when i have you have the module uh, one, module two, module three. Like I told you, you can see I have four units in this first module. And right here, we are working on module one, which is the concept of online learning and pedagogy. Now, what the presentation schedule? What is this presentation schedule talking about? Presentation schedule is a guide that will guide the learners on what they need to do every week out of the 13 weeks. So in week one, this orientation, week two, module one, unit one, that is what they're going to take, then down to where they will take exam in week 13. That gives a guide on what they need to do. You can go a little bit more detail if you know the details you're going to have. Like for example, we have module uh, week 10, module three, unit two, what would they do? In, so it's a guide. Then here we have the required minimum hours of study. Again, this is a guide to guide the student on what is being expected, the type of assessment that they will meet, then the portfolio. We have structured it and give a guide on how they will use it. Discussion forum, assignment, examination, then how to get the most, the facilitation. All these have been provided and the type of learner support they are likely to receive. Now, this is where we now start using the table or specification now this is the main content this is what has been designed in the table of specification so now let's see how this go right here let me make a reduction here so we can see it fully here we have implicate module one so you see it module one here we brought it here there is good to have introduction to the module now the introduction has been given and within the introduction it is now clear that we have uh, four units. Then we started with unit one, and that is what is presented here, concept of online learning and pedagogy. So here we have the concept of online learning and pedagogy. So this is a house tie that you are now going to use, you're going to follow using this uh, house tie that is in there. And it's using this house tie, what do we need to do in this uh, regard? You first and foremost, you need to study the house tie to ensure what exactly that you have in place while using this uh, house tie. So this is the house tie here. We have introduction, learning outcome, main content, self-assessment exercise, conclusion, summary for that review. This is a house tie. So where does the uh, table of specification come in? Right here under the introduction, you're going to present the introduction. You know, sometimes you see writers who say, oh, You've done the table of specification. Then where do I come in? Are you not giving me opportunity to use my creative idea? Yes, this is where you have to use your creative idea because the introduction has not been written for you. The table of specification is only a guide. It's just a plan. It's a draft for you to follow. So you have to come up with your introduction. Then learning outcomes, all you need to do is just to come here, copy the learning outcome, you put it there. But remember, when we are preparing the table of specification, it is done by both the instructional designer and the content expert. So you already have an expert in the field that work in that table of specification. So right here, we're now talking about self-assessment and conclusion. So let's go on and see what next. Now, here is the introduction. So here you have to use your creative idea to bring to bear what we actually make the first introduction very interesting and attractive to the learners. Then after that, you have the learning outcomes and what I did here is just simply come to this place under the table of specification, bam, copy here, and I bring it to this place and you paste it in this area. So that was what I did. Then you now come up here. There is the main content. Remember, we have our key content. And the first key content here is what is online learning? And that is what is here. You can see what is online learning. And you keep writing. Now you write and you walk through. And when you are writing here, you have to be 
very, very interactive. You have to write such a way that as if you are seeing the students standing with you, as if you are in the class, read time with them in the in-person form. You are with them, talking to them, telling them what you need to do. And let them feel you that, yes, I am receiving from my um, uh, lecturer le or teacher is talking to me. So it has to be interactive. It has to be so that the student will be able to interact even when it's not seeing you, it's able to see it in content. And there are ways you bring in this interactivity. That is where you go with the design. And you're going to see it shortly because you have all this prepared. And you see it, everyone here, you keep writing, you keep writing, it's your creative idea. Now, first interactivity, discussion forum. You have written, you have done some things. And remember, if you come into the table of specification here, we did mention discussion as part of the activity that the student will embark on. So right here, now we are bringing in a discussion. And what is the discussion here? From your experience as ODL students, state three differences between online learning and face-to-face. -face. Post your answer on the discussion forum and comment on at least two other posts. Now, we want you to see what other persons have done, not just you comment on them. They would have said some things. You're going to make comments on what they have said or what they've spoken. So in this regard, what is going to happen is that you have made this and discussion continues. Now, the second one is difference between online learning and face-to-face. -face. So you see that is a 3.2. And again, a work on you bringing your creativity to bring it in. Now, again, we have another interaction. Collaboration. They you stop again, you wanted to collaborate. Here, what is it they need to collaborate? I said, you are going to be grouped to come up with your view on the use of blended learning in teaching and learning. In discussing this, consider the mode of delivering online, open, distance, and face-to-face. -face. Now, we'll talk about the meaning of blended and what you blend. Then the advantage and disadvantage of said, each group is to present an e-poster in the live section, which means, this work will be done, you give it to them, but during the live session, there will be an e-poster that would have been presented. And remember, it's being mentioned here, presentation. So here, you have given them opportunity to collaborate and they will prepare their poster and they are coming to present the poster during the live section. And again, this will guide, when you have a well-structured and well-written material, it guides the facilitators to know how to plan for this. So we move on, we have again, now this is very unique and we have pedagogy and learning techniques. And this is where we talk about links. If you look at where I have this blue, blue uh, patches, say click here, it's, these are links. So how do you do it? You see that right here, I need them to talk on, we're working on what is pedagogy. And right here, I say click here or copy the URL and I've given the URL into a browser to read Christine password article on what on pedagogy what education needs to know plus 40 free strategies to implement in your classroom and published when 13th may 2021 so they already have idea where they click what they are going to mean they say go further to download the nine pedagogical uh, uh pedagogy explained in christian articles so you see if you click any of these you see that it goes and it's giving them a guide of what they're going to do with it and like this, I said, among the nine pedagogy, look at it. I said, among the nine pedagogies, which would you prefer and why? I left it that way. It's like in-test question. I have not provided answer. I'm not provided. I just left it. Go and think about it. You have it with you. Then here again, I said, read Leo's article on six effective learning techniques that are backed by research. You use research to back it up. So you click it again. I said, what is your thought in Leo's presentation? Is it different from what you have in your learning environment, in your context? Is it different from what Leo has presented? So it is not left for us to say, oh, it is different. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not different and how it works. So right here now, that is what we need to get done. So if you click any of these, it takes you straight to what you need to get out. So let's see, we click on that, you see, six effective learning techniques, and it's opening a different browser, depending on how you now set it up and so on. So this is what we need to do, and we walk through, remember we have case studies here, and here too we have case study, case scenario, not really case study, case scenario. There is a difference between case study 
and case scenario. For a case study, it's the actual that happened that you're going to present. And for you to use case study, you must get permission from those people that you are taking the actual that happened from the, from them, maybe in the school organization, as it is, as it happened. And sometimes they may even allow you to use the real name or the but you must take permission. But whereby you cannot get that done, all you need to do is to create a scenario, say around it. So this is a scenario that was created. I'll read it quickly. Say, COVID-19 outbreak suddenly changed the pattern of learning in schools as well as levels in Nigeria in 2020. Nobody prepared for the outbreak. The long stay at home of the pupils and students got the stakeholders thinking. Thereby, some schools quickly adopted the, adopted the use of Zoom to transmit their lectures and lessons where the lecturer or the teacher come to lecture or teach as if they were in the face-to-face -face classroom. Some did pre-recorded videos and sent to their students either through emails or WhatsApp, social media, and also we are also used. Then some state government introduced the use of radios, television to transmit lessons to elementary schools. Few schools conducted examination with a uh, combination of Zoom and physical performance. Students write on paper, scan, and send to the designated emails. Only National Open University of Nigeria was on record that structured content on a designated learning management system and had full virtual examination, where all essays and multiple choice questions were done electronically. From the scenario, answer question one in self-assessment exercise. So here are the self-assessment exercise. The self-assessment, remember, if we come through here again, Let's come through here on the uh, self-assessment, the assessment type, multiple choice. That is what say. How will you classify the method of learning in public schools during COVID-19? It is here. Then if you go to the next one, which of the following statement is most correct in the application of problem-based learning techniques in an online learning? This the letter is going to find it in one of the references that was made to the links that was given. So what is the similarity between online learning and face-to-face -face learning? So these are ways you, so everything is provided and we have the answer. This is, you are still writing. At this point, you are still writing. So the answers could be here, but at the time they are translating it in the LMS, in the management system, they will now know how to tweak this, that it might not bring in gamification, to get the answer out and the rest of them. So you can combine gamification and a little bit of AI to get that done. They will now have conclusion and summary. So this is the way you translate it into, into working through it in, in a bigger form. So you could see that all here we have taken care of everything. There was something they need to do individualistic, transmissive, collaborative. We have seen the link, we have seen this. Then the timing, 24, not overload them. Then who is going to do the writing? So why judge Juliet in negative? So when you are going to allocate for writing, it's always good to get this done and it's given to you. You look at this is the session I am going to work on. And I always recommend it's always better, although sometimes it takes more money and more time for you to collaborate, to have more than one person developing a course material. So when you do that, it is very, very interesting. In summary, we could see how we can develop our content using the table of specification. So while you are using the table of specification, the first thing you need to do, study what is in the table of specification, align it with what you have in the house style that you are giving that you want to use. Then from there, you walk through. Remember to take care of the links, how you integrate the links and how you come up with the questions. In some cases, it may not be self-assessment exercises, it may be quiz. So if it is quiz that they are using, you bring it in quiz. That is what you're going to use. So with this, I wish you the best as you walk through this, using it to develop your content. Thank you for listening.